Let's look at our first example for net ionic equations. For this, you will need your, your data sheet, and you're going to need to take a look at your ionic solubility chart here, just so that we can make predictions on some of the ionic compounds that we might have here and whether or not they dissolve. Because remember, if they dissolve, they dissociate. So, here we have sodium iodide solution reacts with a lead to nitrate solution. Now we have to be able to come up with the compounds. So this is ionic, metal and non-metal. Sodium is a one plus ion. Iodide is a one minus ion. So I should be able to predict the one to one ratio here and make NaI. I'm told it's a solution, so I'm gonna just go straight ahead here and say that it's uh, aqueous state. Here I have lead two, so that's Pb2 plus. Nitrates, one of our polyatomic ions, NO3, one minus. And so you can see the one to two ratio here that we're going to need. And so for this one, lead nitrate, as we're told it's a solution is also aqueous. So now the harder parts or the, the necessary chem 10. Uh, for this part here, we have to de uh, determine what type of reaction this is. And so think about it, what type of reaction do we have in which two soluble ionic compounds will react with one another? This should look familiar to us as double replacement. And so as a double replacement reaction, we know that the cations have to switch places. So the cation of sodium now has to come over here with nitrate. You can see it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and so I predict NaNO3, but I do not know its state. I don't know if it dissolves or not quite yet. I also have to deal with iodide and lead making a compound, and you can see lead with its two plus charge and iodide with its one minus is going to be a one-to-two ratio as well, and so I create PbI2, and Two things I need to do, finish off my states, and I need to balance this reaction. So, NaNO3, there's NO3. Let's try and zoom in. Oops. All right, so there's your NO3. You can also see Na in there, but I like to go from the anion point of view. And I see that most things with nitrate do dissolve and are aqueous. I look down here, I don't see NaNO3 as one of the four exceptions in this whole category, so it must be up here and it must be aqueous. I need to check for lead iodide, so I find iodine. There's iodine. Most things with iodide are soluble, and then I look down here and, oh, lo and behold, there's my lead too. So it puts it in the slightly soluble category, and so lead iodide does not work well with water and will remain in solid state. Because this is a solid that is being produced as one of the products, this will precipitate out of the reaction. You mix the two solutions and they will actually produce what is in turn a yellow uh, precipitate and this yellow solid will settle out in your beaker. So now we have to take a look at this for our total ionic and figure out which of these things is going to uh, fall into the categories of strong acids, and soluble ionic compounds. Remember, soluble ionic compounds will be in aqueous state. Strong acids will produce uh, aqueous products as well, but they are brand new. So NaI is an ionic compound. It is soluble due to its aqueous state, so it does dissolve and therefore it dissociates. So what we find is sodium iodide, much like the table salt example in the last video, this guy ultimately breaks apart. We'll have Na, oops, Na plus ions. I forgot something else I was supposed to do. And I'm gonna jump back and finish that part off here. All right, uh, I forgot I needed to balance my chemical reaction. For those of you that notice and were yelling at your screen, good for you. Uh, I can start with nitrate or iodide. Both seem like good places to start because of their high number compared to everything else. And so if I have two iodides over here, I need two here. That immediately affects my sodium. There's now two sodiums on the left, so I need a two here. That changes my nitrates. I now have two over here, but there's already two. Fantastic. And then I check my lead, which is the last one. One lead here, one lead here. So now I'm balanced, but I see that I actually have two parts sodium, two part iodide in its dissociation. 
Okay, lead nitrate also does the same thing. All right, there's one lead in here, but remember it's a two plus ion. This little two tells me that I have two nitrates in solution. This one is another soluble ionic compound, so it must break apart. There are two crystals or moles of it, so there are two parts sodium with a one minus char or one plus charge, and then there are two nitrates as well. And then notice my solid would not dissolve, therefore it cannot dissociate, and so these are the ones that are left as is. Only my strong acids and soluble ionic compounds uh, will be changed through the reaction. So this is the non-ionic, this is now the total ionic, and now the last thing we need to do here is go through this equation and look for things that did not change in number, charge, or state. So I look on this side, I've got two sodium ions. I have two sodium ions. Same state, same charge, same amount. This means that sodium didn't participate in the reaction. It was unchanged by the chemical reaction. And so what we do is we would just cancel out the ones that did not participate or were not changed by the reaction. Here I have two iodide ions in aqueous state. But iodine is now in a solid crystal here. It's gone through a change. So I can't cancel that one out. Here's some lead 2 ions. And I see lead is now in a solid state. So that's a change. Two nitrite ions, or sorry, nitrate ions. Aqueous negative, there's two of them. Two aqueous negative nitrate ions. Nitrate, because it stayed in solution, didn't get involved in the reaction. And so what we do is we take what remains. While we did mix all these things together, the actual reaction was only between the two iodide ions that you had in solution, the one lead 2 ion you had in solution, to make your precipitate of lead iodide. And so that becomes our net ionic equation. Okay, there's our first example. We'll get through a couple more here uh, in one more video. But, yeah, it's really just identifying and going back to chapter 5 and identifying which ones will change, which ones don't exist as their compounds in solution. And it's just those two. There is heavy prerequisite material here on being able to come up with the correct formulas, identify the reaction type, come up with the correct formulas and products, and balance the equation. All right. Everything that we do in stoichiometry, even with this first part of just doing net ionic equations, as we look at that here, it is entirely necessary to come up with the right formulas and the correct equation and balancing. If this goes wrong here, the entire question goes wrong. Okay, so be very mindful of your prerequisite steps. These are important things to practice and work on. So feel free to use rough paper or scrap paper and work out these things like we did with lowest common multiples and so on and so forth to come up with these correct formulas because it is absolutely necessary in order to get to the right answer. Okay, good luck with it. Why don't you guys try number two as we switch videos here. Uh, I'll try and get through the remainder uh, in just one video. Okay, and there we go.